Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Advanced Practitioner webinar this morning. Our topic is going to cover upgrading to ShareWell uh, to the latest versions and a wide variety of what that actually means. Our presenter this morning is Eric Kruger, who is a principal consultant here at Stratacom. Eric will give a brief overview of Stratacom for anyone who may be unfamiliar when he kicks off, but I wanted to do a couple of housekeeping items first. This is being recorded, so if you'd like to view the recording, everyone who's signed up and attending today will get the recorded links within the next several business days, so you can view it again or share with your team. If you have questions, Eric will be pausing between slides, but I'm happy to ask those questions for you. At the end of the broadcast, we will open it up for question and answer session. At that time, you can talk to Eric directly. So if you have questions as we go along, feel free to enter those. You can enter those in the questions pane. If you don't see a questions pane, find your little orange box with the white arrow. If you click on that, that should expand all your panes and you should find a question section there. With that, I'll kick it off to Eric to get us going this morning. All right. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, so my name is Eric Kruger. I'm a principal consultant here at Stratacom uh, for the last 22 years. This is all I've done. So we're gonna, today we're going to talk about um, some upgrade strategies for ShareWell. So we'll go a little bit. Let me show you the agenda. We'll do, uh, I'm going to go over ShareWell's application architecture, just a brief overview of their architecture and all the different pieces of it. Uh, um, there's a new version out. What do we do? And I'll have a little. I have a little 9.7. I go over some of the main features of 9.7, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about version upgrades, content upgrades, and also re-implementing and what that is. So just a little bit about um, Stratacom. We were founded in 1997. We're solely focused in the ITSM market. We've been a shareable partner for over eight years. We've got 16 certified shareable consultants on staff. Um, so that is our main line of business. We do host this application, this shareable advanced practitioner call. Uh, if you know somebody else that would be interested, just, just contact Laura at the email there, lwalker at stratacominc.com. And we do have some complimentary strategic projects, products. Um, we've got a standalone uh, flexible mobile first experience application. So that's mobile for ShareWell, allows you to use ShareWell on your mobile phone, tablet, with a kind of a mobile first uh, experience. Uh, Kanban boards for ShareWell, that's currently in beta. We're working with some beta customers on that. Um, a lower environment sync utility that's coming soon. This will just allow you to sync your, your dev test stage environments, whatever you've got with your production or with each other or whatever you want to do. So instead of doing a, a database restore, you'll just be able to, to run the sync utility to sync everything, including historical data and um, like the trebuchet tables, everything. Um, some other things like Active Directory users team and workgroups integration pack will allow you to integrate your, your Active Directory teams and, and distribution lists, anything like that into the ShareWell teams and workgroups. And we've also got some maps, uh, customer approvals, and our red map is really popular requirements, enhancements, and defects. Um, just a slide, you'll be able to see this. We'll, we'll, we'll have this recording, also the slides available for, for people. Just a little bit, um, our mobile solution on the left, kind of what that looks like on a phone, and then our Kanban solution on the right. Um, and these are both written on our development framework, which is basically a framework that sits on top of ShareWell's REST API and allows us to write applications uh, against ShareWell uh, like these. All right, so let's get into our presentation. So I'm going to talk a little bit about ShareWell's application architecture and the different parts of it. And this this uh, really relates to the upgrade and upgrading the different pieces and parts to ShareWell. So ShareWell's main application, CSM. Um, and this is that ShareWell that most of you are familiar with. So uh, our CAM, for example, is not, does not have this architecture, has a different architecture. So CSM has a few physical layers. So at the core, we've got the .NET-based applications. And essentially, these apps, they just take ShareWell data out of the database and make it accessible to the end user in various ways. So that includes ShareWell's Windows client, which is the user and admin, and th those contain all the code needed to run the ShareWell CSM app. Um, and that's why you can connect those directly to a database. So 
the CSM blue client has all the runtime code built in and the orange, orange client has all the admin code built in. Um, and server processes like that, a app server, the event monitor, et cetera, et cetera. Those are all kind of core. They connect to the database and they have all the code to run the Sharewell apps built in. And then we've got Sharewell's web client and portal app. So these contain the underlying code that enable to run the CSM apps uh, via a web browser and they also connect directly to the database. So they also have full .NET stack code in them that allows them to pull the say trebuchet data out of the database and create those objects and the forms and things that you see when you log into the web browser. Uh, and then there's the data layer. So Share will use a SQL server to store the data collected by the CSM system and it also stores all of the application logic. So anything you do in the orange pill, um, once you publish all that, the forms and the workflow logic and all your one steps and everything is stored in the database. All right, so when we're talking about an upgrade, we can split Sharewell up into like a logical separation of duties. Um, so the first piece is the application version. So this is what Sharewell publishes and has release notes for, and this is what you generally see. Um, so that would be 9.32, 9.40a, 9.63, 9.7, 10.0, which is in beta right now. Um, and this includes, included in this is your Sharewell clients, your orange and your blue client, your web, the web client, which is, and, which is a, a, a kind of a combination of uh, different IIS applications. So you've got your browser, your Sharewell client, your Sharewell service, which is your SOAP, Sharewell API, which is your REST. Um, and these include overarching functionality of globalization, authentication, grid functionality, form design, API features. So all of that is included in this application stack that Sharewell has. And then you've got your content. So content versions are a little more obscure. The versions are generally not published. They include application features like the new activity functionality. So it's important to remember here that any content they're simply application features added by Sharewell using the newest features in the application version. So there's nothing really special about this content. There's nothing that Sharewell does with content that you couldn't do. Um, if you started with just a base uh, Sharewell development orange pill, you could, you could do everything Sharewell did and write your own content and have your own applications. So, but Sharewell does have a content version. And then the data. So we've got this logical data and the data dictionary layer may be changed in each content version and it also may change in an application version but this is rare so when i talk about the the dictionary layer so i just mean um the obfuscation with the object so if you're adding new fields to incident for example so if sure will add new fields to incident or to the activity or the journal table or any of those tables, um, those are generally changed in content versions. So new fields generally put in in content and they can change in application version, but that's rare. Typically in application version upgrades, say 9.7, you're getting new trebuchet table functionality, uh, but it's things that you as a developer don't really see. You never see those uh, new fields in an object or, or rarely. So, so this is one of the things when uh, when a new version of Sharewell comes out um, and you upgrade, if they add fields to say uh, journal or incident, you don't get those. And we'll talk about that a little later. So the data layer also contains the ticket data, records with new content such as relationships, forms, et cetera, and new fields added by you, the content to the application. So like I said, usually new fields, are gonna come from content in the objects that you see in the orange bill. There may also be some new fields behind the scene in Trebuchet. Um, those are generally added by application, so like your 9.7 up, upgrade. All right, so we've got a little background on Sharewell and how it works, so now there's a new version out. What do you do? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about 9.7, and then we'll talk about our standard application upgrade content upgrade and then what, what an application refresh looks like. All right, so Sharewell CSM 9.7, some new features in here. So if you're thinking about upgrading, um, why do I wanna upgrade? Sharewell generally supports two versions back. So, uh, you know, 10 is coming out, so they'll support 
you know, version 10, version 9, and from what I've heard, even version 8. So if you're on something pre-version 8 and you and 10 comes out, uh, you'll technically be out of support, but uh, I don't really know what that means. I'm guessing if you're on 4.6 and have an issue and you call, they're still going to help you. Um, uh, and Sharewell also does not, an interesting thing about Sharewell's uh, development strategy, they don't backport fi fixes or features. So for example, 9.7, um, multiple record selects and grids, they'll never backport that to 9.6. So you'll never get that functionality in 9.6. They'll never have like a 9.6.4 that would have functionality in 9.7. Um, uh, a, a lot of other vendors do that, but now Sherwell's more, going more SaaS um, based and SaaS vendors generally, that's how they operate. So on-premise vendors, a lot of times will back, back patch, but on uh, SaaS vendors generally will not. You got to go to the newest version to get the feature. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so some of the new things, multiple records select in grids. So you can select multiple things, run one steps on them, for example. Uh, you can call one steps from Sharewell's REST API, um, previously only available uh, via SOAP. So that's one thing for our, uh, like some of our products like uh, Kanban and mobile, we can run one steps. Uh, we have to use the SOAP API and our apps are REST so we do, we can run one steps, but there are some glitches. So for example, if you're using SAML, um, they don't work. If you're a SAML only customer, one steps, you have to do it a different way. Um, SM action catalog improvements, so card configuration with search for action catalog widgets and sorts and filters in action catalog. Um, we've got some form improvements in clone a form, asterisks for required fields, record limit changes, um, the grids and the desktop clients will Oh, I have put not, but it should say now export all data. Um, I'm going to change that now. They'll now export all data. Record limits removed for the REST API. Um, it used to be like 100,000 records. Uh, and that has to do a lot with their BI um, integrations, the Microsoft Power BI. Uh, expanded field choices for go to a record action, not limited by rec ID lookups. Um, that to me, when I first started developing in Sherwell years ago, was one of the most fascinating things that I ran into is you couldn't look up records by say someone's phone number. You had to do a rec ID lookup and we have this wonderful hack to get around that to work in one steps and we won't have to do that anymore with 9.7. Some globalization improvements, you can see those there and some foreign key administration, like that keys are configured across group members the same way now. And then there's lots of multiple fixes and other minor enhancements. I mean, literally hundreds of things that are either enhanced or fixed. So some minor, these are just the major things. So if you do want to go to say 9.7 or you're waiting for 10 to come out, which is in beta right now, um, most customers do our upgrade and share while doing what I refer to as a binary upgrade. So this is, uh, we can call this the application upgrade, the binary upgrade, whatever we want to call it. But uh, it, it it essentially is you're running your uh, the application executable, you know, to install the new version. So the, you get the clients upgraded to the newest version. The server components are installed on the on the servers and upgraded to the newest version. The web tier they're upgraded to the newest version, so you get the new essentially IIS packages out there. So you have the newest uh, web tier with all the newest runtimes underneath. Um, you know, something with, I think it's nine, nine, six or nine, seven, they added, you know, you need a new version of .NET, I think the 4.7, um, which if you're keeping your servers up to date, should be on there. If you're not, you'll have to run some updates to get that. Um, new content added by Sherwell is not touched during this upgrade. So, for example, if um, they changed a form, um, and a good one is in, uh, in nine, six or nine, seven, they added that the different activity uh, types that you can do. So, which is essentially just new forms. Um, you don't get any of that. You don't see any of that. Um, so some new functionality provided by the application upgrade will be available immediately, like multi-selecting grid. So most of the core functionality that I talked about in the 9.7, you will get that stuff. But some functionality must be manual added. So like adaptive layouts, if you want to try adaptive layouts, you don't get those. You, uh, they just, Aren't, aren't there because they are a new database entry, a new form, 
and so they're not going to be in your upgraded system. And uh, I, I will talk about how, how to get those, so don't worry. As a shareable developer, Eric, you have we've a, got a question. Okay. Is now a good time? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Have you seen issues with performance with the record limit changes? Issues with performance? With, mm -hmm. with, with what? Issues the with record? Performance. With the record limit changes. Oh, the record limit changes. Uh, no. No, because the, uh, the way that the record limits work um, in, in the Windows client, you still only see like 25,000. But when you go to export, it'll export all of them. And in the REST API, that's paged anyway. So really, the only the only difference is I think that it was capped at 200,000, 250,000 records before. Um, it, but you're just paging through records anyway. So no, there's no um, performance difference. Of course, if you're trying to export a million records out of the the, uh, the blue client, and before you were only exporting 100,000, you're going to notice it. It's going to take longer because you can export more records. But other than that, there's no no performance penalty. It was just kind of a strange thr throttle that Share will put on those. That um, I, I just think they maybe they never thought people would have more than 250,000 records. I don't know why they had that in there. Thank you. Um, so as a shareholder developer, you'll be able to take advantage of all the new features added in a release. So for example, if you wanted to put in your own activity pane changes, you could do that yourself. Um, and as a shareholder user or customer, you'll be able to see the new features, like you'll get the better web rendering, whatever else they put in, you'll, you'll see that as part of the upgrade. So this method is fully supported and encouraged by Sharewell and is quite common. In fact, Sharewell, this is what they're telling all their customers to do. You just up, upgrade the binaries and you're, you're done. You know, you have to go through some testing. And quite often there, there are things that maybe don't, don't work with the way that you did it that you may have to redo, but that's, that's quite common. So, so even if you were completely 100% out of the box and you ran the upgrade, you're, you're still not going to get all the new out of the box stuff. So, so just some thoughts about the standard upgrade. Um, Servo's application upgrade will add all the functionality needed to implement the new features. So if you do that app upgrade, this is general. I've, I've seen before where sometimes you have to do, and sometimes it doesn't in rare occasions and you want to do something and you do have to get, get it added to the database, but it's pretty rare. Um, so many items developed by Sharewell will not be available if you simply perform the application or binary upgrade. So new form layout, new out-of-the-box workflow, basically anything that's data in, in your object database, like incident or incident status or, or any of those. So Sharewell intentionally leaves many of these items alone, as you may have heavily customized your system. So keep in mind everything in Sharewell is data the forms, the relationships, the incident record, the service hierarchy, the workflow, it's all just data in the database. So if Sharewell did automatically move in new content, every time they changed the form, it would overwrite your customized form. The new service hierarchy items would magically appear. So if they added a bunch of new service category, subcategory items, those would just magically appear in, in your system if they move things in. New things like closure codes would, would appear. So you can see why Sharewell has been recommending customers just to perform the application or binary upgrade because this con this content upgrade can be complex because your Sharewell customers are generally happy with their Sharewell implementation and don't necessarily want Sharewell's new content. Um, so and keep in mind, Sharewell is developing content for what I think there's about 2,000 customers. So, but they're not developing content for those customers. They're developing new content for customers they have not sold this software to. So that is their that is their primary market for new content. So Sharewell content is all the new stuff that Sharewell developers have added to the base out of the box. Sharewell version. So all this content was added using the new app functionality added by the framework developers. So they add content just like you do. Um, so many of the new versions of Sharewell will include new content. So and like I said, most customers are pretty happy with what they've developed in Sharewell. And um, Sharewell is busy developing and enhancing the out-of-the-box modules for the demands of their ever-growing customer base. Um, and that is Sharewell's goal is to develop the content to satisfy the base requirements of the largest groups of 
co customer as possible. So that's what they're shooting for with this content. They may get content, you know, enhancement requests via the idea scale um, or ideation or whatever, idea station. Um, but they're putting that stuff in for new customers. They're not putting that stuff in for you guys. Um, you can you can get it, uh, but generally they're they're putting that stuff in to attract new customers. So most app upgrades will allow customers to develop new functionality for their user base to spe suit their specific business requirements. So why would you ever perform a content upgrade if you're happy with what you have? Sherwell's developing this new content for new customers. Why would you ever want to upgrade content? So why do you, would you want to add new content to your system? So if you've ever developed your shareable system to meet your business needs, why would you need to upgrade your content? So maybe you want the new form layout. So Sherwell's introduced a new form layout in 9.6. There's nothing really magical about it. When it first came out, I had just assumed that they created a bunch of new widgets um, and that you would have to use those new widgets to, to do this form layout, but they didn't at all. They just uh, used their existing widgets and they just arranged them differently and used a, a different style. Um, in fact, you can put those nine, six forms on any nine version, they'll work. You can, you can load them in. Um, new relationships between objects. So that would include the new activity functionality in nine, six that people may want. Uh, foreign key support. So gener generally disliked and misunderstood because of its poor implementation. Foreign keys are a great idea and solve many is issues with customer environments like duplicate public ID data. And customers, for example. So you can have customers with the same public ID if you're using foreign keys. Um, so the application upgrade gives you the capability to implement a foreign key, but if you want to implement it throughout your system, a content upgrade might be best. So you can, you know, once they introduce the concept of foreign keys, you could put those in, but you're not going to have any foreign keys um, on your old content because those are that's a content thing. You want to apply a map that requires a specific base content version. So this is pretty popular. We hear this a lot with people wanting to apply a red map for requirement enhancement and defect tracking, and it requires base content. I don't know the version, I think it's seven, it, whatever that means, but you have to have like uh, service catalog templates and something else in order to, to do it. So we do rely on some underlying base objects being in there in order to apply the red map. And that, that's pretty common with all these maps. They assume a, a base content version whatever they're developed on. And if that content version is not there, um, you'll have difficulty applying that map to your system. So now we'll get into the meat of how do I perform this content upgrade? So if you want some of this new stuff, how do I do this? So that right now, now Cheryl's talked about coming out with something, but right now they don't have an official content upgrade package. They may be working on one or they maybe just be charging you $20,000 from professional service to do it. Um, I, I don't know what their, what their future plans are exactly for this. So, but because of this, customers can make their own customized content upgrade from an out of the box installation of the newest version of Sharewell. So if you wanna do a content upgrade, this is what you do. So you install an out of the box version of Sharewell. I have a lot of typos in this. I did this for a user group just a few weeks ago and I was, oops, creating it that morning of the user group, so I was flying through this. So you start by creating a, a map in this new version of Sharewell and begin adding the new fields, relationship forms that you wanna pull over. So some things like the main form should be renamed and copied. So there's, there's lots of things like this that you have to do, but um, so that you don't overwrite your existing main form. So, and then these items will need to be retailed to meet your needs in the upgraded system. So for example, you're taking the, the incident main form, making a copy of it, calling it like incident 97, sticking it in your map and then loading into your system. And then in, in your system, then you can, you can, uh, modify that with your fields, throw your, your custom fields on there and kind of make it look the way that you want. But you're starting with their base form. Then you apply the map by creating a blueprint and applying the blueprint. And then you test your upgraded system. You make changes. 
either in your upgraded system or the base out of the box system, depending on what needs to be done. Um, then you wash, rinse, and repeat. And you actually um, go in and probably do a, a database restore if you have problems. It's probably going to be your best bet. And then start again. Um, so items to be aware about. So making a copy of the main form so you can tailor them in your upgraded system. If you don't make a copy, they'll just overwrite your existing forms, which is probably okay if you have another system, like a test system that you can look at, so you can make it look the way you want. Um, um, and there's a very specific way of adding items to the map so they're only added and don't overwrite. So you can choose to only add new or overwrite existing items. Um, and with this method, you're only moving over the items you want or think are important. And then you can be very selective and focus only on the modules that you currently use. Um, it can be very time consuming and it's definitely not for a rookie shareable admin. So this type of upgrade has lots of ramifications, should be done by a, a pro. And the biggest thing is if, if you have an error, some sort of error, you have to be a good enough at Sharewell to go in and troubleshoot what's causing this error and to figure out, oh, it's this, whatever. You need to you need to be able, be able to troubleshoot that. So that, that that's what you'll run into mostly. Like creating this map and moving the objects over is kind of simple. Um, troubleshooting the Sharewell errors that come out, that's a little more complex. So, you know, and I've been in this business a long time, 22 years. And so compared to other ITSM systems I've worked with, uh, you know, HP, Remedy, ServiceNow. I mean, this is a fairly simple process compared to those other systems. Uh, um, I mean, you, this you're talking days or weeks for a uh, content upgrade. These other systems you're talking months or a year. I mean, it can be it can be quite extensive in the other systems. So, the the Sherwell upgrade uh, is it's pretty minor. And and the more you do it, if you keep up more with the content. Um, you know, if you if you went from four six to nine three, and now you want to go to nine seven and do content for nine seven, you know that's that's a lot of content. But if you've been kind of doing this along the way, um, it, it's you know each each one there's not a lot of content upgraded from version to version. So if you kind of do this along the way, um, it, it stays simpler if you do it that way. All right, so when does upgrading no longer make sense? So you've got outdated customizations or unwanted functionality. Your business objects are bloated and gangly. Maybe you've added tons of field that you don't use anymore or you know, made some quote unquote mistakes. Um, the thought of adding functionality and enhancements offers more risk than reward. So uh, you've got a heavily customized system. Maybe it's really old. Maybe you start on version three or four and you want to add some of this say the new form layout, but uh, because you've got so many other things in there that are different, um, there's just a lot of risk and things to go wrong. Um, the business object's grown to or past capacity. Configuration does not align well with the newest tool versions. Customizations are superseded by out-of-box functionality. Um, the data recorded in the tool no longer aligns with reporting or corporate needs, like your data is not good not good data, it's not clean. Business processes have diverged significantly from the tool customization and configuration. So maybe you configured it five years ago to work one way and now your business has changed um, and your processes are different. Hey Eric, we've got a question. Okay. If your system is highly customized, would it sometimes make more sense to just rebuild what the new content changes via blueprints rather than export and import as a map? It might. I mean, depending on uh, how much, I think the vol volume is probably something there. How long would it take me to recreate this versus how long would it take me to, to stick it in a map and apply it and troubleshoot it? Um, you know, if it's not much, you could probably just recreate it. Um, uh, I mean, everything in Sherwell is fairly simple to recreate. Um, so I think it depends. I think that depends on volume. You know, you could you could spend weeks recreating stuff too if you have a lot. If you're recreating all your forms and want to add all the fields to all the modules that are new. Um, but yeah, you know, if, if you want just a specific piece of functionality, like maybe the new activity stuff, 
and maybe just recreate it in, in ShareWell instead of trying to move it over. Um, the, the one issue that you'll run into is if you recreate those uh, fields and things like that, uh, they're going to have a different GUID than the standard out-of-the-box fields do, which may not be a big deal. Uh, it depends on, and it depends on, right? So, uh, um, Sherwell is pretty consistent with that. So, the business object for in incident, for example, and all the fields and in incident across all customers are the same. They have the same GUID for the business object and the same GUID for each each field that's out of the box. And if you just start adding fields instead of moving them, um, you'll get different GUIDs. Um, and I, I, it, it may affect some in, integrations potentially, um, but I, I know from having written some integration like with our mobile and Kanban, it wouldn't affect that. It, like it wouldn't affect those types of products because those are, although like our out of the box setups for mobile and Kanban wouldn't work. We'd have we'd have to go in and reselect the field because because our out of the box points at GUIDs um, and even if the field names are the same, we're using GUID as the key. So our out of the box setups, we just have to go in and refine those, and we just check a box and a list of fields anyway. So it's really simple to add. But if you do have integrations from other vendors that are relying on GUIDs for out of the box fields, that that may be affected. So that'd be the only caveat for that. Of course, you could always go change them at the database layer if you have access to the database if you're on premise. So, just some things about application refresh, as Cheryl likes to call it. We call it re implementing. Um, so, it's not really a failure. It probably represents growth. Maybe you started out as a small company or a small implementation. You've really grown your, your ShareWell user base. Um, you know, that just happens. If you've had it for a long time, you, you may have gone through a lot of changes. It allows you to revisit old decisions. So, you know, a lot of the customers that we end up doing re-implementations for, it's not the same team running ShareWell now than it, than it used to be. The team's kind of changed over, um, or maybe, uh, you know, executive leadership has changed and they have a different vision, so something like that. It, it's just simpler to start over. Um, and, it, you know, you're not alone. It's, it's it's fairly common in the industry to re-implement software in general. So I would say in ShareWell, it's a little less common because the upgrades are fairly simple, but you know, we've, we've re-implemented some customers. We're doing some right now. Um, so it's not necessarily a, a bad thing to re-implement or to refresh. So if I'm re-implementing, where do I start? So just be, be educate yourself about your current tool. Be critical. So start with a list of everything you like, and then would you implement it the same way again? What changes would you make? What's your dream list of features that, that you don't have? And then I identify complexity, risk, and ranking for each feature, and identify nice-to-haves, must-haves, and should-haves. Um, and then make a list of everything you don't like. Do you still need that functionality? Uh, identify your pain points. What changes would you make? How could you better implement this in the future? What's your dream list of features that you would like? So th this is pretty common. Like if we go into a customer that has ServiceNow or Heath or something like that that we're replacing, this is essentially what we're doing with them. You know, we're kind of doing a, a gap analysis between what they have and what they would like. And we're coming up with kind of an implementation plan. So review the latest, greatest out of the box. So uh, what features prompted your organization to select ShareWell? And then how does the newest version solve some of your wants and desires? Um, research your portal implementation. How can you better serve your target audience? So, uh, you know, sometimes just walking through an out of the box implementation of ShareWell, you know, they have a lot of features in content now that they didn't have five years ago. So just, um, you know, the out of the box workflows may just work better for you than what you've got in ShareWell right now. So the most important task is planning. So identify the problem, and then is the process logical and sound? Um, identify your criteria and constraints, prototype and showcase processes internally, refine and implement small pilot, and refine and roll out globally. So this is, this is our general implementation plan for a new customer. So you're kind of a new customer again if you're refreshing or re-implementing. Um, review your categorizations, review the newest shareable processes, 
So just kind of some more things to think about. So my thoughts on re-implementing, the, the, the biggest question, it's very, fairly easy to stand up Sharewell and, and put the supporting data in. Your, your, your category hierarchy, your, your customers, your CMDB data, all of that is fed in um, uh, either from another system or it's fairly static, right? So that, that's pretty simple. So to move or not move your data, that's the big question. So re-implementation essentially restart on a completely new out-of-the-box system. So a historical data like incidents, journals, changes, what do you do with that stuff? Do you, do you, do you need it? Do you migrate it from the old system? Is there data mapping need, needing? Do you start fresh? Um, those are some choices you're going to have to make. And it usually comes down to, to reporting um, and ticket lookups. So if you're on premise, you know, you may be able to run an, a quote unquote old sharewell system side by side with your new one for six months to a year. So people can look up tickets and then you can have that SQL database there for reporting. Um, if you're hosted, it's a little more complex because you probably aren't going to be able to do that. Um, although sharewell may let you take a database from their hosted and put it locally in your system as like a, as like a test box. Um, so you could possibly do that. So that, that's generally, I mean, generally shareable data is fairly easy to move because you don't have to do a lot of remapping. Um, so it is fairly simple to to move. It's not like moving from ServiceNow to ShareWell where the, the data de doesn't really map that well. Um, and we've done some of those. Um, and, you know, the data structures are just different. So you have to do a lot of remapping and and, and moving data in and, and Sharewell stores a lot more data. It's a lot less relational than, than other systems like ServiceNow. Um, Sharewell store in more than just keys in their, in their database. So um, it, it's, it's a lot of work, but going from Sharewell to Sharewell, uh, you know, it's generally not too bad, but if you do have a lot of data, um, it might be just a way to start fresh. So that's it. So I guess if anybody else has any other questions, now would be the time to ask. Um, like I said, this this will be available for download, and this will be recorded also. So uh, a question popped up while you're talking. I think you answered it, but just to be clear, um, what do you do with your old data after you re-implement? You yeah, a lot of customers that. like to keep it around for reporting. Um, you know, so you can put it into like a reporting database. Um, you, you could move it over if you really want it. Um, it, it uncommon, but but possible. You could either move it over with with SQL calls, or uh, you know just import it into your share wall with an external data connection. You could do it like that. So, I, but I would say generally most customers just stick it in another database and uh, report against it. Okay. We only have one other question in the queue right now, so if anyone else has questions, I'd like to encourage you to enter those now. Uh, we'll leave the lines open for about a minute after we answer the last question. But if you do have questions, please put them in now. Absolutely make sure we get to them before we close out. So our next question, Eric, there's a couple coming in by the same person. Let me see if they're related. Um, TCP, TCP to HTTPS change will work required will affect all users using web and rich clients. How to implement and inform users. TCP was supposed to help us with performance, but now will impact all users when we upgrade. If you want yeah, to look at the questions to, in too. Yeah, because you have to go to HTTPS. Um, yeah, you know, it's not gonna affect your web users. <laughs> it's just gonna affect your blue client users. Um, yeah, it's just got to be changed in your connection. Um, I, don't, I don't know the best way to, to, it depends on your corporate standards and how you're pushing that stuff. I mean, that that connection, it, it, it's simply a, um, you know, it's a file sitting on the computer, so you could you could modify it, pull it back, modify it, and push it back. You can just tell people how to do it. Um, you know, if you've got firewall rules open, um, you know, they might be affected, but but generally, I, I, I think that's just going to affect, of course, you'll have to change it on your server apps and things too, but gener generally, it's going to affect your blue client users. So, um, yeah, I don't know. That's, that's going to depend company by company on how, how you're going to let people know about that. Okay, and then from the same person, um, required fields that already have an asterisk, how will they be impacted by the new feature for required fields? 
Oh, I'm sorry, Laura, could you repeat that? Yeah, this is by the same person who just asked the previous question. So required fields that already have an asterisk, asterisk how will they be impacted by the new feature for required fields? Oh, uh, well, if you already have an asterisk, you must be on a version they released that in, unless you put it in yourself. If you put it in yourself, you'll just get another asterisk. <laughs> that, I think they're throwing that in at the application layer, so they're just appending to the to the label. Okay. Uh, we've got a few more questions flowing in. What do you recommend for customers who are already implementing ShareWell with the upgrade? So what do we recommend for customers who are already implementing ShareWell? With like the in the upgrade. middle of an implementation? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I would say if you're just at the very beginning, it's pretty easy to switch. If you're halfway through, it's, it's kind of a big risk. I wouldn't, for a new upgrade, unless there was some big problem that you had where, where the new version was going to fix it, I would, I would just stay with what you're on. Um, and it's it just adds it can add a lot of time to your implementation because you'll just run into these weird things that that now you have to troubleshoot now you don't know is it something I did as part of the implementation or is it something the upgrade did it, it just gets more complex I would stay away from all upgrades until after you go live and you run it for a while okay um, I've got not a question but a comment that could be helpful okay Said, um, someone said they just went through this. One of the things we did was force overwrite connections.xml uh, with Land Sweeper, although other tools can push too. Oh, yeah, so I think that kind of answers that other question how, how for the TCP versus HTTP, how do you up, update that? So there's that connections XML file. You can, you know, everybody's is going to be the same. Um, so yeah, they use Landsweeper to, to just push that out to people's desktops and overwrite their connections XML with the, with the new one um, that would have the, the proper protocol in there. Okay, uh, the next one. If you have a choice to re-implement, would you recommend now to 9.7 or waiting till version 10? I guess it depends on what your timeline is. Um, we just got introduced to the beta version 10 this, this week. Uh, I don't know, and you know, there's some stuff in version 10, um, but your uh, 9.7 is gonna be the safe route because 9.7 is basically 9.6.4. I mean, I, I don't know why they jumped to 9.7. It's an, another 9.6 dot other than maybe they generally only do a couple point releases. So, but it, it really is 9.6, there, there isn't a huge leap there. Um, but then again, you might want some of the features in, in 10, which I don't even really know, I can't remember what they are. I sat in the beta call this week, but I can't remember off the top of my head. But you know, that's not gonna be released until quarter one of next year, and then you're probably not gonna wanna go to it until quarter two, until they have like 10.1. So if you have no real Good reason to upgrade. I'd probably wait until 10. Like if you're not, don't have any bugs or any of the. But if you want some of the new functionality, like like the multi-select or the new form layout or something like that, I'd probably go with 9.7. Uh, even even 9.7 is a little new um, for for my taste. But I I do know it's mostly fixes for 9.6.3. Having worked with those product products pretty extensively, so uh, I I'd probably do the 9.7 nine nine or at 10.0, you're probably looking at like a, a May or June start time to upgrade would be my guess. Okay, we've got several other questions. So here we go. Will the Cheryl license allow you to keep the old version and still run the new version? Uh, as far as I know, it will. I, I, I don't, Sherwell's licenses are not tied to IPs. Um, so you kind of have to look at your EULA with Sherwell, but generally, Sherwell lets you run as many development and test systems on your network as you want. You can have five or six of them. Um, and I think if you set up the old version, uh, it's just uh, like a reference system. I don't think 
Cheryl would hassle you about their EULA for that, I think that would work just fine. So there, there's no technical limitation of doing that. It's more around Cheryl's agreement with you and how many on-premise implementations you can have and whether they call an old one like that production or or like archive. Um, so if, if you're like a regulated industry, you'd probably want to check with Sherwell and make sure that was okay. For everybody else, I would just set it up and, and let it go. Nobody, Sherwell is not going to care from my experience. It'd be more your um, internal uh, regulators. I would probably question that. Okay, great. We've got quite a few more questions. Um, the next one I have, I think we should hold to the very end. The question is, can you touch base on the mobile client you mentioned? So oh. let's keep that for last. And anyone who wants to hold the line, um, you could talk more about it and show a, a real quick demo. So let's hold that yeah. for the very end because we've got quite a few other upgrade questions. So yeah, we'll yeah, get to that if you can hold the line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after the questions, I'll maybe do five minutes on mobile and five minutes on Kanban and show those two solutions if people want to stick around and see them. Okay, so stick around if you're interested. Um, if you have to drop at the top of the hour, we do have this recorded, so you'll get a recording and you can watch it later too. Okay, our next question. How do you tackle re-implementation when dealing with a global enterprise with localization and translations? Is any of that data affected? Yeah, because of the globalization changes in the new versions, it is gonna be affected probably, depending on how you did it. They've made quite a few changes in globalization, like in 9.7. Um, so that is probably, I, I know one customer we're working with right now, like in their portal, they had it in English and French, and that uh, French didn't work. So uh, there's just some things that they've changed that is probably going to affect how you how you do globalization moving forward. So it, it's getting better, but unfortunately, probably customers on older versions had workarounds to make globalization work that will quite probably not work in the new versions and you'd have to kind of go to how Sharewell's doing it uh, in the new versions. Okay. Next question, can you move things like specifics objects from a previous version to a newly implemented system? Yeah. Yep, you can move those. You're just gonna, you know, you're just gonna get the what I kind of call the data deck layer, the the data layer. Um, you know, you, if you move a specific from an old old version into the new, you can throw it into a map or blueprint and just publish it, and it'll go in there just fine. As long, you know, as long as there's no conflict with GUID or name or anything like that. Um, but yeah, they'll they'll go in fine. Um, Sherwell doesn't care where those specifics come from. Um, could be a really old version and it should go in just fine. Um, um, I'm trying to think if there'd be an, any other conflicts with new functionality that it wouldn't have, but I, I, I think it would go in okay. I don't think that'd be a problem. Okay. All right, when you're hosted instead of on-premise, I would presume that the majority of the steps you discussed aren't as doable since we don't have control over our databases and instance. No, nope, they're all, the, the only thing that, that is different is the database restore, you have to have sure we'll do it, but you could just do a czar restore instead. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it, everything's the exact same. Uh, it, uh, except for, le you know, if, if you want to leave your data behind, you will probably have to get that database from Sharewell and put it on premise. They will probably not let you have a system. Uh, and generally customers only get two hosted systems. So if you wanted to put an archive system up in Sharewell's cloud, they're probably gonna charge you 30 grand for it a year to have it. But they will give you that database to put on premise and you could set up a Sharewell environment with your current version on premise to use. So you could do that. But yeah, it, as far as, Re-implementing or content upgrades, those will all work the same. The biggest difference is our archive data. Like if you're leaving data behind, where does that go? If you're SaaS, you, probably your only solution is to pull an on-premise. Okay. Would a clean application server upgrade 
affect content format layout? No. Oh, a clean? No. No. An application server upgrade? No. I mean, you do that every time you upgrade, so that you won't get any any content with that. So none of your layouts will be affected. Okay. What is the ballpark cost of professional services to re-implement versus binary upgrade? Uh, I think they're doing a fixed price of twenty or thirty thousand to do the content upgrade. Binary upgrade is is well, if you're hosted, they'll do that for nothing. If you're on premise, that's um, that's generally just a few days worth of work and testing to do a binary upgrade, depending on what you run into. Um, when we scope a content upgrade, we kind of look at your system and see what you've got. Um, like we won't do a fixed price offering, um, like sure, well, PS will do, but we'll look at your system, see what you've got, go through it and see what you want in the new and see how much work it, it's actually gonna take and then throw you a quote on that. And that could vary wildly depending on, on uh, you know, what content you wanna move and what version you're on. So I would say I, I think it's I think Cheryl PS is charging twenty or thirty thousand fixed bid to do content, but I don't know if they've actually done one successfully. That I'll ask um, tomorrow. I'll be at the Arizona user group. So I at the last user group meeting they hadn't done one, I believe, successfully yet. So okay, uh, is a nine dot or 9.7 upgrade required to get to version 10? That's a, that's a good question. I, I, the content for sure, no. Um, uh, if you're on an older version, possibly. I don't have that stuff in front of me. I would say generally, no. Generally, um, Sherwell is pretty good about putting all the new stuff that it needs into the new version, but it will tell you if you have to to be on a minimum version in order to upgrade. Um, so for example, version 10, you might have to be on like 8.0 or 8.1 or something to upgrade to 10. But I, I don't know, I'd have to look at the release notes and see, I, I don't think I've ever seen that before. Um, but uh, I don't know, I'd have to ask some of our consultants, but uh, you would know, it would tell you if it did. And then you just have to pull down that older version, upgrade that and then, like if you were on eight and for some reason had to go to nine something to upgrade, you just pull down the the latest nine version, run that, and then run that ten right over the top of it. But I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. On content imports, have you found any issues you couldn't solve because of coding that you can't manipulate or change? I mean, I, I think there's been issues we couldn't fix, but there are always bugs <laughs> with like something doesn't work right in the new version, the way it worked in, in the old the old version. And you have to you have to do it a different way, not because Sherwell doesn't support the way that you did it, but because there's a bug in the binary that somehow affects the way that you did it. Um, so, yeah, there, there's nothing really nothing has changed as far as how Cheerwell developers or your admins write content. I mean, that stuff, it kind of stayed the same, but because of the way some of the new binaries work, you will run into things that don't work right in newer versions, especially from very old versions, um, just because uh, either Cheerwell's kind of changed a little bit how it works, uh, but we, yeah, we do run into that stuff. And, and generally, it, you're best off just rewriting. Like if it's a one step that doesn't work because of, of of something in the new version, you're better off just rewriting that one step. Okay. We do have um, at least a dozen more questions. So we don't have a hard stop at the top of the hour. We're gonna continue running the webinar. As I mentioned earlier, if you have to drop at the top of the hour, we are recording. You'll get the recording in the next several days. You can watch it again, uh, but we'll keep going as long as everyone has questions. So the next question 
is, is the sync with Tableau only available with the content upgrade? No, that is available just with a binary upgrade. Okay. Thank you. Um, next one. I heard through the grapevine that ShareWell's core with no IT out of the box is coming next year. We were planning on a re-implementation. Should we wait for core to be released? That depends on your schedule. I personally wouldn't wait. Um, <clears throat> I, I, all they're really doing is they're, they're separating core out from uh, maps, basically. So you can get core right now if you just implement ShareWell and don't, don't put in any sample data. I mean, you essentially get core. Um, so yeah, the way it'll work is you'll install core and then you'll lay the maps over the top that you want. Oh, I want ITSM, which is, you know, change. I, I, I don't know exactly how they're going to do it, but, um, it, their strategy is like right now, if, if you want just facilities, if you, you know, essentially you're paying for ITSM and getting facilities for free, well, they're going to flip that on a deer and you're going to buy core and then potentially by, I don't know what they're gonna do with, with, with facilities, but it would allow them then to, to sell more siloed apps in the companies, like say customer support, for example. You could sell a customer support uh, share well to a company that had no use for an ITSM app um, and they would just pay for customer support. So that that's the strategy around that. So it's not really gonna, I wouldn't wait for it. It's not really going to make change uh, unless you don't, you want ITSM. If you're just like facilities and HR and don't want ITSM, that's, that's maybe a good idea because then you would just get facilities and HR and you wouldn't have to have the ITSM stuff in there. Um, but, but otherwise I wouldn't wait for it. Who knows when they're going to release it for one. Um, I, I know it's coming and I know why. And as a partner, it's, it's a neat idea because I can sell core to a customer cheap and have an app on top of it that I can charge for. Um, and that's the same thing they're thinking. So, but no, I, I wouldn't wait for it. Okay. The next question is a little bit off topic, but I've got a good answer. Um, this person is asking for tips on performance issues. They've been on ShareWell for three plus years, uh, and it seems sluggish. We actually have done one of these advanced practitioner calls specifically on performance tuning, and it was done by Eric, who is our speaker today. So to the person answering, asking the question, I will email you the link to the recording on that and you'll be able to get a whole good hour of lots and lots of tips. Um, I can send you my slide deck as well if you'd like to have that on hand. If anyone else listening on the call has not seen our performance tuning or some of the past webinars, they are available on our blog or our news section of our website. You can go there and see a lot of the recordings that we've had in the past. Alternatively, you can also email me at the, you can see the slide up here with my contact information. Feel free to email me and ask for the link to performance tuning, or we've got a master document that shows all the recordings you've done over the last three years. I can send that your way as well. So feel free to find them at our website or email me for that. All right, let me get back to the top of the questions here. The next is a SAS question. Are trusted agents required on 9-7? And if so, is this a one-way communication versus a VPN tunnel? Uh, trusted agents, yeah, I, I, I think that's right. I think I heard that v, that it's either 9, 7, or 10 that v, VPN tunnels going away. So if you want to go to that, uh, trusted agent, da, 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 it goes down for sure, right? You can get to anything on your network from Sharewell SaaS. Does it, does it go back up? Let me think. Um, I believe no. Like if you want to do something to your Sharewell server, um, yeah, you can talk to Sharewell support and they will create you a drive on that server that then can be accessed via trusted agent, I believe, but it, it, it's mostly just for the Sharewell SaaS environment to access your network. And I, I believe from the last user group I went to, somebody, someone brought that up, that VPN, they're on VPN and that's maybe not gonna work anymore. Okay, thanks. 
Do you know when the cloud slash hosted sites will be upgraded to 9.7? It depends on the customers have to put in a request to do it. Um, so if you want to go to 9.7, just tell Shareable Support you want to do it, and they will upgrade your test system, and then you can start the test. Um, I believe they're doing that right now. If you just put in a request, they will not do it automatically as far as I know. They're not like service now, like once a year, you have to get upgraded no matter what. Um, if your system doesn't work, too bad, we're upgrading you. Share well is much more lenient and they will not force an upgrade if there's a problem that with your system you can't upgrade. So just ask them, they'll, they'll do it for you. Thanks. All right, for customer for shareable customers with older platform versions that are considering re-implementation, what are the advantages of doing this versus implementing another tool? Um, to the person asking this, I do have, uh, we recently ran a upgrade versus re-implement webinar. I'll send that your way. That might um, go into a lot greater detail, but maybe you can quickly look over that, Eric. Yeah, well, uh, upgrade versus a different tool. I mean, you're still in the same tool set, you, so you don't need different skills to implement it. Um, depending on whether you bought it or whether you're leasing it, it might, might be extremely expensive to go to another tool compared to what you have now. Um, I, I would really only look at another tool if I, for some reason, re really didn't like Sherwell's tool set and didn't like the way it worked. Um, but having worked with pretty much every other ITSM system out there, I, I can tell you the grass is not greener on any of those other sides. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it just gets more expensive and, and harder to, to administrate as you, as you kind of go out there. So um, re-implementing, it, it's going to be much simpler to stay on the ShareWell platform than to go to something else. Yeah, and as Eric mentioned too, unless if you're subscription pricing, you'd have to check out the difference uh, in pricing. But if you purchased your license up front, the perpetual model, you know, you've already invested in your software. So that's going to be a cost savings of re-implementing versus going to another tool you might have to buy or get into a new subscription deal for. Okay, next one is a comment. Um, this person uh, says Sherwell told them they couldn't go from 932 to 10. They had to go to 96 or 97. Oh, first. okay, that's news to me. So that, that's good to know. I had I hadn't seen that in any of the release notes. Um, but that's interesting. I I hadn't seen. I sat in the beta for 10 too, and they didn't talk about that. Um, they they did re they did request that some of the customers try to upgrade their systems and quote unquote see what happens during the beta call, but I, I don't know if anyone's done that. So that that's interesting. That's good to know. I hadn't heard that, um, but yeah, that's that's good information. Okay. Does nine seven allow Power BI API or connector? Uh, yes. Yep, that's built into nine. Six, I believe even nine six or nine seven introduced that Power BI and Tableau, um, and I I, I've, I haven't used it, um, but I got a demo of how it works and it's pretty slick. It, it's got some limitations, but um, it's a good start. And so, if you're looking at Power BI, that I believe nine six three maybe introduced that Power BI is pretty common. So it it essentially it just runs global queries. Um, so you 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 pull the global queries and that you want. So like all open incidents or whatever. So, um, and I, I, you know, there is a limitation in nine, six of, uh, what is a hundred thousand or records in rest API and nine, seven that's removed. So you can actually get all your records over to power BI. All right, great. From the same person, um, they're also asking, they say we need a, to be able to print from the portal page, which new version allows this? I'll print from the portal page. Uh, I don't know. Laura, maybe you can follow up on Teams and send them an answer. Somebody will know. Okay. I will make a note of that and I'll get back to you. Um, not sure how we'll answer this, but I'll give it to you anyway. How can we install ShareWell software in a personal system for learning? Is there a free version available? Um, 
Uh, no, but you can um, use your company's license key on on your own on your own machine. There's no there's no limit to the number of on-prem systems you can set up with your company's license key, so that that would count. Okay. Just a second to scan to the next one. Is it realistic to try to implement foreign keys without starting from a new out of box? <laughs> um, all right. So, having dealt with this foreign key issue, um, I, I would say yes. And depending on what you, how many you want, it can get complex. So, one of the things I've noticed is that when you implement foreign key, it kind of breaks everything else. Uh, that had that so even you even something as like a global query if you have a global query where where you're looking for all incidents with open tasks and so any of your related items those those will all break when you put foreign keys and you have to go fix them all and you have to go in and it, it's not a hard fix you just have to go back in and reselect the field so if you're looking for or uh, where, where tasks are open you have to go back into that section of the global query and redo it because it's actually replacing um, uh, like the like the task with like a pointer to a task, um, and it doesn't do it automatically. So if you put it in foreign keys, you do have to go fix stuff like that. So putting the foreign key in is fairly simple, right? So you just check a box and assign, you know, put the foreign key in. But it's all the stuff that's affected because of the way that uh, the foreign key works under the cover. So um, depending on like. I, honestly, it's still so half baked right now. I wouldn't even start. I, I wouldn't even start with an out of the box version of it. I, I'd still wait because it's foreign key is not great right now. I don't know what improvements are coming in ten. <laughs> so, I guess to answer your question, it, if you wanted to put foreign keys in, I would just pay, pick a very specific thing that you wanted to do and try it and see how much breakage there is. But I, I, it's not worth going with a new out of the box system for foreign keys because it, it it's still it's not great. All right. Uh we still got several more questions. Uh the next one is really kind of a comment maybe you can speak to. This person is providing a link to the Sharewell community site and mentions that um people in the community are having issues that are un they're unresolved on version nine seven and are waiting for 971. Do you want to speak to that at all? Well, I'm not surprised when somebody asks if they should go to 10. I, I recommend that it, even 97 is new, so a little new for my blood. So yeah, that's that that's why for the question going to 10, I would definitely wait for 101 um and you know 997 nine, uh, even though it is more 96. I mean every version is going to have something in it. You, you just have to decide what you can live with and what 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 you can't, right? So, you know, on the community site, people are finding things that they can't live with in 9.7, um, and they're waiting for 9.7.1 to come out with. So you'd have to kind of look at those and evaluate them. But yeah, I would say the last four or five, um, or everything since 9.3.2, basically. Uh, that's why there's so many customers on 9.3.2 that are SaaS hosted, because all these other versions are implementing new things, and they, there's little bugs that, all these bugs you can work around, but most of the SaaS customers don't want to do that. They want sure to upgrade them and, and be done. And so, I, yeah, but but that's a good point. I, I mean, every version every version since 9.3.2, I think, has has a, a list, a litany of issues on the Shearwell community site, so. Okay. We have four more questions on the topic of upgrade. So if you have any other questions on upgrade, please enter them now. After we um, after we answer these next four questions, we'll move into uh, that brief mobile and Kanban demo. All right, Eric, if we implement, or if we re-implement, how do we do the switch to the new system in the sense that the old system will still have active incidents? Yeah, yeah um, uh, <laughs> kind of a loaded question, but essentially your new system is your new production. That's what everybody points to. Your old system is kind of your archive system. So I, ideally you'd have all those issues either recreated in your new system um, 
uh, may, maybe you have like requests and things that you need to close, but but essentially, depending on how you do the switchover, uh, you, you might have people kind of looking in two systems. Um, you know, if somebody calls in with a ticket that's not in the new system, they have to go in the old system and, and find it. Um, the, the other thing you could do um, is if you have that old system sitting around, you could do a like an external data connection to that database and create an object in ShareWell that's like old tickets, and then people could look in there. So that's maybe a better way of doing it, but you know, if you're using 10 modules, it's a lot of work to recreate all those objects and things in in your new system. So, but yeah, essentially you've kind of got archive, and then you've got you've got your new system. So, I, ideally, what most customers and what we recommend is that things that are going to be open, like change requests and requests, um, it, to kind of recreate them if you can in the new system, on kind of the cutover. But if you've got thousands of tickets or, or can't recreate because of workflow and you, you have to have the approvals and stuff for auditing and you might be stuck kind of trying to close those tickets out in this old system and kind of swivel chairing back and forth it kind of stinks but there, there's not a great answer for that unless you bring all your your old data over so it depends on your situation all right uh next this person is wondering about upgrading directly from 9.3 to 9.7 and wondering if all the integrations will remain intact after the upgrade. Okay, so I gotta go back in my memory banks. There, there was a big change to REST API um, and what it returned in one of the versions. Maybe somebody can help me out here. <laughs> I, I'm, I think it was before 9.3, I think it was a 9.2. Uh, that would be the big thing is they return uh, field name instead of field label name or field label in REST API calls and they made that switch I think in 921. So that would be the thing. Other, other integrations they should just work fine. Um, so if you're a 932 and, and that change has already been made I think and you go to 97 your integration should work the same. If you're on a little older version, there there was was a change, and maybe somebody can type in if they remember, where a REST API call, it used to return the label, the label name of a field, so like incident ID with a space. And now in, in the newer versions, it returns that like that quote unquote database name of the field, like incident ID with, with no space. And that was a big deal for some integrations because they had, when they're parsing through and looking at field names. Um, but I think 932 already had that, so. I think you'd be fine. Okay. This, the question by the same person, um, does the upgrade, let's phrase it a little strange here, um, will the upgrade impact existing table management and BP? Uh, will it exist, ex uh, will, will it affect existing table management? Oh, in the blue pill? Yeah, in blue um, or no. BPs. So blue, BP, blue pill, I'm not sure. I, I think blue pill, if they're talking about table management. Okay. Um, it, no, not, not your existing tables. There might, there might be new ones if you do a content upgrade, um, but existing tables, it, it won't affect that as far as I know, uh, it shouldn't. Okay, um, last call for upgrade questions. This question for you, Eric, will be our last one on upgrades. If anyone else has upgrade questions, please put them in now. Otherwise, after this question, we will move into those short demos. Um, with the recordings and slide coming out, could you include some information about the lower environment sync and Active Directory integration pack you mentioned? This person looking for more specific features and ballpark time frame. Is that something that we can include? Or you can talk about right now and then maybe include on the slide deck? Is that possible? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. So the Active Directory integration is a big PowerShell script uh, that we have to integrate team, you know, Active Directory group membership basically with Sharewell teams and, and customer work groups. Um, and so it runs on a schedule and it basically syncs those two. And that, that that's available now. And we usually do it as like a 
uh, like a fixed price services offering because it's different for everybody. It can be tailored to work out of a database or Active Directory, or it can do customer work groups, and there's just a lot of stuff around it. The uh, the lower environment sync, um, that product we're developing now, so that's going to be in beta probably, hopefully in January, February time frame. Um, so we are looking for beta testers for that. Coming up, we haven't announced it yet that we're looking, but if you are interested in something like that and would like to maybe be a beta tester, um, contact Laura. But Laura, maybe just we'll, we can email them some more information directly um, ab about that. But the lower environment sync will essentially, um, it, it'll be an external interface outside of ShareWell, but it'll allow you to sync two ShareWell systems. So you can point it at, say, production and QA. And you can say, you'll be able to say, give me all the production tickets. And you could just sync those live. Like every time a production ticket was created, you could have it sync to QA. So you can have live sync like that, or you could do like batch sync where you say, oh, give me everything, you know, updated in the last week. You know, so all those would be scheduled. And then you'll also be able to sync down all of your changes. So it, it's pretty common for a customer to publish a big blueprint to production and then want to restore back down to their lower environments. Um, so lower environment sync will allow them to do that. Um, they'll, they can publish to prod and then the, the environment sync will actually put all those changes back down to the lower environments and, and erase anything that's not in production. Um, and also you can do things like if you're regulated and have PHI data, you can mark fields at, for um, either to be obfuscated or just not copied. Um, so if you have information like that you don't want copied into your lower environment, you can hide that information. So you'll be able to either just put in dummy data or just put in blanks for that data. Um, and you know, you'll be able to sync to multiple environments and you'll be able to either keep them in sync real time. So if you wanted to like a QA and sync with production real time, you could do that. Um, or you could sync like on a, on a batch basis. So I, I think Sherwell doesn't really have any capabilities like this. So other products do. Um, they they have like third party products that will do this for them. And Sherwell does not. So this will be, I, I think, pretty exciting for customers. They won't have to ask Sherwell for a, a restore. They can keep in environments in sync. I even want it because we have so many test systems for mobile and Kanban to keep to keep some of those in sync would be nice. So kind of selfishly want it for our test beds. Um, and, uh, but, but yeah, at, I, uh, in theory, we'll be able to sync blueprint changes from like a QA up to production, but I'm not making any promises on that. Um, <laughs> going, going down is pretty simple. Going up in theory is the same. So we should be able to sync uh, all your blueprint changes from a QA to, to a prod environment, but it's it's a lot more risk. We're sinking down, you know, yeah, there's really no risk. Sinking up is pretty risky. So I, I'm guessing like version two of our product or version three, is, it will have that functionality. But right now we're mostly focused on sinking down. All right. Well, that concludes all of our upgrade questions. So I would say let's move into the, the mobile and Kanban demos. So one of the follow-on questions I'd like you to address when you're talking about mobile is this person's wondering, how do they get our mobile solution? And then how do they implement and customize it? So if you can talk through that as a okay. part of the overview, that would be great. Yeah, I'll show you mobile first. So I'm just going to go into browser stack. This is just a... Um, uh, like a testing platform, but it's good. Oh, uh, show screen. There we go. You should be able to see my screen again. Yes, we see the mobile. Okay. I'm not going to show you UT Dallas's site, but I will show you a public demo, which is available for anybody to use on your phone. So I, I put the URL here. If you go to sharewellmobile.com slash public demo, um, this is a site for anybody to go out and try this mobile site. It's pointing to a sandbox behind our firewall. Um, to get this mobile site, you can contact Laura or Steve Day um, or go to our, our website, uh, stratacomic.com, and find the mobile and just fill out the need more information. Um, this is a hosted solution that connects um, to your shareable environment via REST API calls. And uh, 
we Stratacom does all the setup for customers on this and all the maintenance too. There is a mobile development studio that you as a customer will have access to if you want to make changes or add objects to your mobile solution. So really it allows you to mobilize any object, any field and share while run, one steps, actions, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to log in as someone here. So uh, the logins and passwords for this site are up in the upper left. So like Andrew, Bruce, Claire, and Emma, and the password's just password. Um, so I'm just going to log in. All right, so I've got, this is our our home screen. Uh, so every customer can have a different home screen. I've got the buttons laid out different sizes just to show the different sizes that we can have and some of the functionality. And essentially the way that this thing works is, is you can go in and, and look at lists of tickets, which are just global queries that, that you have in your system. And you can create tickets and then scan barcodes from here. So let's just go in and look at incidents. I'm just gonna do a quick demo of this. I see we still have like 35 people on. so. Um, I'm going to look at, so these are global queries in this list, and I have quite a few in here, more than most of our customers do. Um, but these are global queries that are in your system that we just tag in our development environment, our, our mobile studio, to run in mobile. So these are all incidents with open tasks, basically. And we can sort, if I rotate my phone, I get a little more screen real estate, and I can sort by status or incident type owned by uh, owned by team and any column that's here and all these columns are customizable um, in our mobile development studio you literally just check a box next to a field if you want it to show up here that's, that's all you do you get the list of all the fields you check a box and it magically shows up um, and then of course you can you can search for anything like if I wanted to search for this ticket number I would just show this ticket right so any anything you type in here uh, it'll find if I just wanted to look for like a second second level support tickets, it would just show those. So let's take, it one of these, take a look at one of these tickets. So generally, uh, the way customers use this, you know, they have the home screen, which you can get to by tapping. This would normally be your logo, but I have passwords. Um, you can go look at your incidents, um, and then you can work with these. So I'm just gonna tap on this, and it'll show me my incident. So any of the, the fields that are on here, um, you can see whatever fields that you want to see. We have we do some linking on here, so this is owned by Sherwell Admin, so I can see the information on there. If I had a customer on there, let me see. I've got a customer information here. Yeah, here's one with a customer. So if I look at this customer, I can tap on them to see their their contact. Um, uh, I actually have these. We just put something in this week where these are tappable, but I haven't put this in the public demo set yet. Um, so you can tap the email phone number. And then if I want to look at the tasks assigned to this incident, I can look at those and I can look at them the same way I'm looking at the incident. Um, and then I can do actions from here. So I can navigate through the tickets with these buttons down here, just go back and forth between my tickets. And then I can pull up my actions and I can do things like add a journal entry. hit okay I can run some of these other things I can go in here and uh, can assign it to a different user I can set it to pending resolve so these are kind of the common workflow set of begin work resolve incident set pending I can take a picture and, and attach a picture to here you know if I want to assign it to a different user I can go in here and select a different user to assign it to um, and so it's really written for the interface for mobile so uh, you know, it, it's got like this action bar down here and the navigation's really nice and everything's really, really simple to use. So any object, like here's change, kind of works the same. These are, I can go in here and approve. I don't have any approvals on here, but I think maybe this last one I do. Yeah, so I can approve or deny. Really any action you do in Sharewell, we can do in here. Um, and then you know, creating tickets the same way, just a create form with the with the different fields. Um, you know, I can put in MA and I, it searches MA for in any customer. Um, so I can look there. Um, and of course, you can go through your service category hierarchy. Um, just create this one. Here, I'll just quick create one. 
but yeah, if you go to this site, servomobile.com slash public demo, you'll actually be able to, you can create tickets and update them. You can go on your phone. And there's the incident I just created. Got the actions. It's ready to go. Um, scan a barcode. This isn't going to work because I don't have a camera on this, but you can scan in a barcode um, and then it will bring you up to the, the asset record. So bring you up to this page, right? So, so if you scan the barcode in, you'd see this. And then you can do some things like we can edit, change the status, mark is in repair. I've got a few fields. Oh, uh, change status. Someone's been messing with my actions. That's the problem with this site. Everybody has access to it in the world, so they can just go in and make changes. Um, okay, so that's that's mobile. I'll show you the Kanban. Also, this is this is my production Kanban board for our site. Let me see if I'm logged in. I am. So basically, this is just another way. It's kind of like a Sherwell dashboard, only it allows you to work with records. So if if I've got things that are in tests and I want to drag to implement, I just drag them over there. Um, from new to review backlog, and then the order. So I've got things in order for the developers to work on here and build. Um, we can do things like assign it to different users based on, on on clicking that. We can do some searching. So if I look for everything with uh, mobile on it, it'll just give me all the cards for mobile um, or like button. It'll give me all the cards with button on there. Um, and of course we can edit edit these also and look at a little bit more. These are, and this is against red. You can do this against any object. Um, and of course we have the actions here too that we can do what most what this is mostly about is the drag and drop so dragging from this these are statuses of our development items so um, it's mostly about the dragging and dropping and just kind of seeing but we have a lot this is a beta right now so if you are interested in beta testing this we'd be happy to, to beta test it with you um, there are lots of new features coming to this in the next couple of weeks um, pretty exciting so Eric, I've got a question on Kanban. Okay. When will Stratacom allow specified one steps to execute when moving cards to different columns in Kanban? Um, so right now you can execute one steps um, here from the actions. Uh, executing one steps moving to columns is coming, I, I hope this week, it, it's right here. It's number one on our build, so it should be being worked on at like right now. So this is that's number one on our our build list. Um, so that that should be coming shortly. This week, hopefully. Okay. Another question just popped up with the board. How does it handle moving from new to implement if there are different automation processes associated to it? Um. Well, that's good. So it kind of depends on what they mean, but like if I went from new to, to implement for a, for a here, I guess, um, you could either run those processes from here by running a one step or an action. Um, so it, so whenever I drop this on here, right now it's just updating the status. Once this card is done, we'll be able to run like a one step against that drop. So that would run anything that you have in there. Now, if, if implement runs some background processes and then moves it to say production test, that what will happen is um, it, it will probably change the status in the background. And right now you have to refresh the board. We're coming out, it's right here, this card, we're gonna make uh, the cards aware of changes by other users. So, so for example, if if I have this board open and you have this board open and I drag from new to implement, you would see that card move on your on your board. That'll move automatically. Um, that, that'll be a real time update. Um, and that's coming, I'm hoping in the next two weeks. And then we'll also have an API available. So if something in, in Sharewell changes the card, it will also, so Sharewell can then ping our boards and tell it, hey, I changed this record. Um, and it can send the, the field changes up there and then will change automatically. So this will just, like if it moves from implement to production test, like if I move it to implement and there's a background process that moves it to production test, 
it will just um, it will just automatically move it over there. Like it'll just magically move to that column. So, and we're just going to use WebSockets for that. It's nothing spectacular, but it, it's pretty cool technology. It is real time. You could have a hundred people on this board, and if one person moved the card, the other 99 people would see it move real time. And so, unlike several dashboards, this this will be more like you could actually work out of this and and spend your day in this and actually do the work. So, um, and we'll have lots more Kanban. Just kind of our first first thing. We're going to have lots of other widgets on top of here also that we'll be able to do. So, all right. I don't see any other questions at this point. Okay, well, if that's it, then we'll make sure everybody gets this recording or a link to it so they can download it. And also the slide deck will be available. And then I think we maybe have a couple follow-ups with, with people um, yes. directly, right? Yes, I've made a note of those. So those of you who have questions will be responding directly. You'll be hearing from us in the next few days here. Uh, well, with that, I'd like to thank Eric for all of his time today and expertise. We're hoping to have another advanced practitioner webinar coming in January. The topic is still up in the air. If you have suggestions, let us know. Um, pop it in the chat or questions panel or send us an email. We'd love to hear your suggestions and what you'd like to hear in the future. But thanks for joining us. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season, and we hope you can join us again in 2020 for more educational webinars. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.